G'day everyone, welcome to a very soggy life on the holes this week. New South Wales, our state, and Queensland, which sits just above us, is currently, well, quite frankly, most of it's underwater. We've had two weeks of this torrential rain, and there hasn't been a lot of laminating going on here because of that humidity's just been ridiculous. Uh, my home, possibly tonight, could go under. We're basically two feet from the water level at the moment and we are very concerned. I'm just hoping the king tide that's forecast tonight at about midnight doesn't reach its full potential or we may have a bit of trouble. I haven't even looked at Interim down the river there because she's sitting down there with uh, three and four metre floodwaters going past. I'm just hoping I've got the mooring lines light enough for her to float above all that debris that's going past. This week, I'm basically going to deal with a modification on the bow up at the anchor windlass and I'm also going to be dealing with the helm just behind me here and you can see right above me I've increased the headroom I reckon I've got about seven feet of headroom right now and the reason why is I finally cut out that section in the roof ready for my cockpit roof which Janet and I have just finished in the factory today so we're hoping the wind will die the rain will stop and we might even be able to get it in here at the end of this week very exciting time now let's get into it guys i'm ready i am short of space in here this is why i'm working on it and it's going to get a little bit dark here right in here we've got the stair module that Janet's been um, preparing and as you can see it's perfect it's ready to go now you'll notice these tiny little black pieces of insulation tape here, electrical tape. What they're there for, that's so I can blast high pressure air inside from underneath to release this part. It is a very difficult part to release because it has a lot of contours and a lot of uh, unusual angles. In fact, most of them are almost vertical. So a little bit of a challenge to, uh, to do this one. And I've basically been preparing this over the last few weeks. I'm going to do a complete gel coat of this. Come back first thing in the morning, about eight, nine hours away. It's pretty late now. It's around about 7.30 at night, eight o'clock at night. I'll be back here at six in the morning. Going to laminate this guy up, put a few layers of uh, glass on it and get her started. Um, so what I've got up here is I've got about 10 litres of gel coat. And, uh, and we're going to get on to gel coating that. You'll notice I've tarped up. I've got spray sheets all the way around. I don't want this stuff everywhere. This white gel coat is absolutely shocking for getting on everything. About seven hours of prep and a five minute spray out. This is only going to take about, oh, probably one and a half litres of gel coat if I'm lucky. So very, very quick spray out, but the preparation has been epic, including the disaster with my machine. So I'm all ready to go. I've checked my levels. I've checked the gun. Let's spray up. While I spray this module up, I'll just remind you as to what I'm using it for. The helm station on our boat uh, is a quite an old design, so the area I intend to use as a helm has a large one step, 50 centimetre high step, which simply isn't usable and won't be safe in the long run. So I was able to reuse the module for the internal companionway stairs on our starboard hull. This particular part actually gives you very quick access with an extra 20 centimetres of height the way that I'm actually going to integrate it into the cockpit of the boat. It is a serious modification. It's going to require quite a lot of thought and a lot of structure underneath it, but it will elevate our position and look right at home with a very consistent uh, look uh, to the rest of the boat. And that's what I was aiming for, always aiming for the cosmetics, but more so in my mind, the function of the boat is more important. But if you can maintain the cosmetics and the function at the same time, why not? Hey, let's uh, get some layers on this guy. It's a couple of days since I gel coated, so I've had a plastic bag over it. Um, look, I just didn't have time to actually get into it because I've been working on other things. But now that I've got this gel coated, I've kept the dust off it. That's generally what will create a problem with, um, with gel coat. <laughs> But this is looking pretty good and it shouldn't take me too long. Now normally, small job like this, I wouldn't bother using my spray gun system to 
to wet it out, I'd just mix up resin and do a small part of the time. But because I've got the gun live, full of resin, I'm just going to get into it and do it. It's, um, it's a very, very intricate piece. It has a lot of curves, contours and ridges that need a lot of consolidation. So it's very important to produce this product consistently or you're going to end up with air bubbles in around these regions here, particularly where there's a step tread there. These are designed to have some sort of a floating floor budding inside it and obviously it's in reverse. So this will be foam core as well. I'll end up putting probably uh, 10 or 20 millimeter foam on each of these stair treads, but this piece is going to form a special part of uh, our cockpit at the back of our catamaran and, uh, and provide us with a very good staircase up to our helm station. time you're going to have a small area like this piece of plastic sit over the top makes a perfect template and in that way you're not uh, you're not wasting hours of jigs and and things and and essentially this is going to be quite a a simple profile We don't want to go too far into the margins in there because we've got to bevel these at 45 degrees or at a one to one uh, ratio. And in doing so, we're allowing plenty of room to tie back into the solid glass. All right, simple, easy templates. Now I do need to bevel them, so each of these have to be beveled all the way round, and I can do that on my band, so I just set the, the mitre uh, table at an angle, and I can quickly knock those out. You just gotta make sure you do the right sides. Okay, so I've got my treads down on here. I've got one more piece I need to make for here, because that'll form the basis of our helm station, but these two stair treads that simply need to be a quid of sand, and then I'm basically gonna finish laminating that with another two layers, and that module is complete. So yeah, it's been a pretty quick job in amongst doing the big cockpit roof I got going over there. So it's always good to have two jobs on the go, so you can go from one to the other, no downtime this week. So it's actually the day before Christmas Eve, and I've just finished this module yesterday. So I'm going to try to get this out of the mould today uh, as a big sort of hoo-ha before before I go away for a couple of days. Um, I demolded that large cockpit roof yesterday afternoon, and uh, yeah, after four and a half hours of wrestling with it, I was absolutely shattered when I got home. So I'm going to rip all the peel ply off this because I want to basically get it uh, almost immediately in place uh, and start to think about how I'm going to integrate that into the helm design of the boat. I don't want to chop the deck just yet, but I do need to sit it up there to get a feel for how this is going to function as a part. I've got it released. I'm hoping it's going to come off. John's come to watch. I'll come to watch, yeah. He's come to watch. He hasn't worked for a few days. So. I don't work, mate. No, Christmas, retired. <laughs> right, eh? It actually was off. There we go. Look at that. Oh, yeah? 
That will mark the end of a very successful December. A lot of work happened this December, John. Yeah? So it should. You can't be sitting around doing nothing, mate. Well, the good thing was I had a bit of help with Janet. She was helping do all the prep and stuff, which was nice. That's not moving, is it? Yeah, it is. It's left at an inch. Oh. Mate, how good's that? Oh, it requires Root a very horse. special blend of oh, suddenly and extreme violence. That's right. <laughs> right. Cool. Oh, there's a couple of sketchy bits on it. That's okay. Looks white. So that will be our new staircase to our helm station. How good's that? Oh, that's Put brilliant. Too. Yeah, yeah, I have the fake teak on them, I reckon. Cool. Well, that's good. I'm done. It's outside. Oh, oh. It's under the awning. That's absolutely brilliant. There's a little bit of tripe here. Don't know what happened here, but that's a five minute fix. Moving forward, John. Fantastic. Yep. Moving forward. I'm going to put it up here and cut it off. Butcher into it. What I've got to do is I've got to cut out the bottom step. Now I deliberately only molded it to here so that I was going to cut that out, but I'm going to use my oscillating tool and cut out where this black line is. And that radius there will integrate directly into the actual cockpit itself along that line. And then this part will become part and parcel of the deck part. <laughs> I've been in some intense conversations with uh, other boat owners, particularly those that own sea winds that have Muir horizontal windlasses, and I've come to the conclusion that I'm going to need to make some further modifications. Uh, the issue arises in this area here where my windlass is going to be positioned. I simply don't have the fall required to allow for a pyramid of chain that's going to form up under the windlass and uh, and it's been bugging me and I've been wondering how I was going to go and uh, and quite frankly I probably could have worked it out before putting the deck on and would have saved myself some work but in essence it's actually going to save me work by doing what I'm about to do and uh, you're all going to go holy shit this guy's got some balls doing this that windlass hatch is way too low if I am to put a horizontal windlass in there, which I intend to use an Australian made Muir windlass. Uh, it needs a minimum drop to the top of the chain pile from the midsection of the gypsy. So how that works is that the chain comes up and goes through the gypsy and down through chain pipe through into my uh, anchor well. Now, the, the reality is I don't have a huge anchor well. It's 1200 wide, but it's certainly not deep enough. It is around about 55 centimeters deep so I'm going to have to cut that hatch out raise it up and integrate it back into the deck so it should be for some fun fiberglassing and some good technique and a lot of fairing to come I'm also going to widen that particular hatch uh, although I made that hatch and put it into the mold it would work with a vertical windlass but the issue with that is you're going to have the mechanism or the motor of the windlass physically underneath the shelf that's supporting it and as a result you're going to end up with the chain piling up around the motor itself and potentially fouling around wires and the motor itself and obviously creating more and more corrosion and water in the works. So looking at this hatch here um, I certainly don't have the depth of fall that I would like for that particular windlass. Now there is a hose pipe where the chain goes through and I intend to then bring the chain up to a higher level and uh, basically this whole hatch here is going to be cut out raised to the deck height here and then reintegrated back in to this which will form a nice table for wine uh, and drinks afternoon sundown <laughs> which uh, was Janet's idea and uh, I think that's a pretty good idea it's going to be a pretty expensive um, 
um, alcohol beverage table, but you've got a sort of a lounge suite on each side here. And once this is raised back up and tied back in, I intend to widen this by about 10 centimeters as well, and I may even lengthen it. By doing that, I'm going to get plenty of room for that windlass. Um, Ron Lilburn, who's my mate with the Seawind 1160, reckons it could be one of the most um, positive modifications I could make on a boat because uh, he really does understand the issues of chain buildup and the ability to be able to shift that chain around as you're reef withdrawing your anchor. But uh, I'm going to head into it now. Basically, I've got to cut it back to the edge of the anti slip here and here so that I get a foot where when I build a wall up here for it to be able to sit on and then reintegrate it back in. And obviously there's going to be a lot of tidying up and a lot of modifications, but such a worthwhile thing. I do not want to be retrofitting this once the boat's finished. This will be the beginning of a pretty massive modification that is going to see it look from this to something like this. And I'll just put an image that I've photoshopped. I've sort of designed it all on Photoshop and had a good look at it and made sure that it is going to work, done some rudimentary measurements and uh, certainly going to work. And we'll improve this out of sight. But yeah, cutting that out with a grinder was pretty ordinary. Okay, now that's cut out, I've done a sort of a, a jury rig here and lifted it up to around about where it's got to sit. Now that's actually going to work. All I have to do is expand. I'm going to cut this down the center and increase it out by 10 centimeters. And that gives me more than enough height for the um, horizontal windlass to, to work. I love the idea of the horizontal windlass because it's underneath a hatch as it is in a lot of the sea wind boats. And the nice thing about that is it's firstly out of the weather. Secondly, the one that I'm purchasing has a composite cover on it. The old aluminium one tend to pit and look pretty ordinary after a few years. So this one hopefully will be able to keep in good condition. I can always polish it and re gel coat it and the likes, but that's gonna work. So the horse pipe will be here. It'll go through a roller up to the horizontal windlass and then I'll have around about 75 centimeters of drop from the top. Now the top of the windlass will in fact sit around about here and will in fact be further back in. I've decided I'm going to sit it in there on top of that bulkhead. There's a little bit of room inside. I'm going to sacrifice a tiny little bit of room inside the cabin to get my windlass further back and give it actually more um, strength sitting on top of that bulkhead rather than just hanging on a on a, uh, on a shelf like most of them do. So there's a lot of things I can do here now that I've actioned that cut and uh, that's pretty much it for me for the day. Oh God, honestly, I'm just knackered. This COVID has just belted me this week. I've been uh, pretty crook and, uh, and I'm only just on the mend and I'm, I just don't think I should push it too hard at the moment.